Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. Now, we're in difficult times. It's very difficult to go out to the shops, certainly here in the UK, unless you're going food shopping. Uh, but thankfully, uh, Axminster's website is still up and running and you can still order things. And that's what I've just done recently. Now, there are six things I want to talk about, and probably the least expensive is the most useful. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll start with that straight away. Now, a long time ago, I bought some tea track from Axminster, and um, at the time, I thought, this is just what I need uh, for these uh, sort of clamps. These are the lever clamps. These are Axminster ones, uh, which I've had for a while, uh, but also the Festool ones, which are uh, almost identical design. But the tea track I bought, I should have checked, was the wrong size. So when I discovered that Axminster actually do stock the correct size, I, I went straight ahead and I've ordered some. And I, I'm going to show you how I built this T-Track into this bench. And it's made a whole big difference to the way that I can use this bench. Now, apart from using these clamps with the T-Track, you can also use these Camlock hold-down clamps. They're not very expensive. Uh, neither is the T-Track, it's not hugely expensive. Uh, and uh, so I'm really pleased with that. And I'm going to show you this uh, Shakunin Kataba uh, Japanese saw. Uh, now, <laughs> I didn't pay for this. Axpence has sent me this as a little gift, uh, which I thought was very kind of them. Now, I'm getting geared up to build a new shed, but at the moment I can't find the wood. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and so I'm gathering together all the materials that I need. I've already checked. I've got enough nails for my nail gun, but I needed some more screws. So I did the usual thing, I did a quick uh, look on the internet and discovered that if you want really good quality ones like SPACs, uh, Axminster are right now, or when I ordered these, were cheaper than some of the other suppliers. In fact, I think most of the other suppliers. Uh, so I was very pleased with, uh, with that. So I've got those screws ready for doing the shed. Now in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to build a reasonable sized shed which will be useful to me. And actually, if you needed a small workshop in your garden, the shed that I'm going to design uh, could be just the job for you. And the first thing I'm going to show you is this universal T-Track. Uh, it's described as being universal T-Track for guide rail clamps and for T-bolts. Comes in lengths of 915 millimeters. And it's 19 millimeters wide by about 12 and a half millimeters deep. And it's got screw holes at regular intervals along its length. Now, the best way to fit this is to create a channel which will just take this so that this front face is flush with the surface. And that's what I'm going to describe now. And when you're doing this, you've got to remember which way to go with the router. That's the edge I'm guided from. So if this were the right way up, I'd be going like this. So I'm starting from this end going that way. I'm just going to set the final depth. Uh, this relies on the writer being put on a flat surface and you're able to lower the writer down uh, so the tip of the cutter is touching the flat surface. Then you put something under here which represents the depth that you want to cut. In this case, it's the actual material. And then lock that off. So that depth now is set to the exact uh, depth of this extrusion. I'm going to do the second pass. For the first pass you would have seen I had this cable supported from above. Uh, unfortunately it was a bit tight and so I had a little whoopsie here. Never mind. Uh, and so I've now uh, taken that cable away from its support. I'm now going to do uh, the next pass. Perfecto. Look at that. Absolutely super. Then in order to hold this in place, remember to centre it uh, in your slot first of all, uh, I'm using some 3.5mm by 16mm uh, long screws. Now I might have gone for 20mm long screws but I don't have any but 16 is going to be more, more than adequate. So that's super, that's in place, that now means that whenever I want to hold something, 
I can just use my clamp like this, and there it is, and I can do whatever operation uh, I need to do. And if I need to use a second clamp, I can bring it in from the other end. So if it was a larger item, no problem at all. I'm really pleased with that. And do remember, have the clearance at either end so that you can get your uh, clamps in and out easily. And don't forget these cam lock clamps will also fit in the track. And you can make all sorts of work holding things, things for jigs and so on, uh, using these uh, cam lock uh, hold downs. And uh, so you can do all sorts of work. So if you weren't lucky enough to have a vice in your workshop, you could make up sort of impromptu vice-like items with this. And they can be as, as long as you like. You could have uh, a vice which stretch across a whole length like this, uh, and uh, you could position the cam locks wherever you want. You see, I've got some extra holes here. I could have brought these in. So you know, it's up to you. You can make whatever you need. Now, many machines have these sort of T-slots in them. They might be uh, band saws like this, could be drilling machines, all sorts of things. And the cam lock hold down comes with uh, a pair of these little uh, gadgets which fit into there like so. Uh, so now you could make up all sorts of little uh, jigs, hold down pieces, whatever it might be uh, to fit with uh, whatever piece of equipment uh, that's got those sort of T-slots. So that's quite a, a useful feature as well. And that comes free with, with the kit. Now, if you're using your capex saw for trenching, uh, with that little green lever down, if you don't move the workpiece forward, you end up with cuts like this. That is as far back as the saw could go. So you end up with this awful shape here. It's not flat bottomed. So you have to bring the workpiece forward. And what I've done is I've got this piece of wood, which is the right sort of width here uh, to bring stuff forward, but it needs to be held firmly in place. And so I'm using one of these T-locks. So it goes in like so and push that back in position, tighten up and that's held that nicely. It means now I can go ahead and do the rest of the trenching. And you can now see I'm getting a parallel cut. So that's quite handy for holding that in place. Now I must confess I don't do a great deal of um, sawing by hand. Uh, however, um, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it right. So I'm going to give this Japanese pull saw a go. Now, many years ago, I went to one of the Axminster shows. I absolutely loved those shows because you used to get so many little bargains, you know. Anyway, uh, and I saw that they had this Japanese guy there uh, and he was sitting uh, cross-legged on the floor. And during the course of the day that this particular show was running, he made some furniture and all he had was a chisel, uh, a Japanese pull saw, and uh, I think he may have had a, a plane, I'm not sure. But anyway, it was absolutely amazing. He was sitting there, cross-legged on the floor, sawing away. I don't even think he even had a proper bench. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Anyway, now this demonstration won't be amazing because I don't do a lot of freehand sawing. But uh, let's have a quick look and see how well this saw performs. What you have to remember with a, uh, a pull saw is it is a pull saw. It 
cuts as you pull it towards you. The advantage of that is that the blade's not being for forced into a curve as you're trying to do a forward cut. You're pulling straight and therefore the blade stays straight. And you do have to remember that when you were returning in that direction to not push uh, down. So you're not trying to make the cut on the return stroke. I better not saw through my bench. <laughs> Let's get that up a bit. Uh, the only thing I'd warn you is uh, don't get your fingers too near these because they are sharp. They really are sharp. Anyway, let's have a look at this cut. This is a piece I've just cut off. I'll bring it nice and close and hope that you can see just what a good quality cut that is. That's really nice. And you'd only need to give a, this a little light sand and it would be perfectly good finish for a piece of furniture. That's very impressive. <laughs> Despite my poor technique, I think everybody realises how fussy I am about getting things absolutely square. And my small sort of six inch uh, engineer square um, has seen better days, frankly, a bit like me, I suppose. And uh, so I needed a replacement. Now, about the time that I was thinking about the path guide system, designing it in my mind and chatting with Axminster about it, um, I set them a challenge. I said, uh, I bet you, you can't come up with a square which is within my definition of being really accurate. So I'd forgotten all about that until uh, I got an email the other day and they reminded me about it. And that, well, this is what they sent to me. Now, this is the Bridge City 200 millimeter square. It's quite expensive. It's got a very nice anodized body here and a stainless steel uh, blade. And there are markings on the blade that go from naught measured from this face here up to 200 and from naught measured against this face here up to 150 millimeters. There is also a little cutout here which will give you the ability of doing uh, dovetails with a ratio of 8 to 1. Now the way it's constructed is that it has the ability to be adjusted and there are four screws that go in here. And if you look, you can see the black part and the uh, silvery anodized part. Uh, those two parts are effectively separate. And so by loosening these screws, you're loosening the contact between the two parts and then you can make an adjustment. I wouldn't recommend doing this because this is really, really accurate as it comes out of the box. Now it's made in China. Now I'm, I'm gonna take back everything I said 10 or 15 years ago about things made in China, that you know, they, they produced them on the cheap. This is not cheap, but a kit. It really is beautifully made. And it's guaranteed square, both on the inner face faces here and on the outer faces. Now, there's this bit in the middle. I really don't know what that, the purpose of that is. Uh, there's a sort of orange bit which is loose. And I've seen Matt Eastley's video about this. And I think he's right in saying that this is just to make it a little bit easier uh, when you're trying to lay something up. It just gives you another option for holding it. So uh, that's probably the purpose of that. It is, it's, it's very nice. It feels good in the hands. Now, you'd say, well, you would say this because Axminster have given it to you. Well, I did challenge Axminster to produce something which was up to my standard, and now they've rem remembered to tell me they've sent me one, so I think I deserve it. And final thing I want to do is mention uh, tools with a mission. Now, a little while ago, I was getting rid of some old tools, and I was actually almost going to take them to the dump. Uh, but I knew they had some life in them and they were not really in such a bad state. And thankfully, somebody contacted me and said, have you thought about donating them to Tools with a Mission? Now, Tools with a Mission, uh, they gather tools and they refurbish them 
and they then send them off uh, to parts of the third world, into Africa and places like that, where they're given to uh, young people who can use them either to set up their own little business or to set up some sort of community workshop uh, to help them improve their lives. And it's a really good charity. Tools with a mission. Well, that's the end of this, this video. Uh, some things I've bought recently, a couple of things I was given by Axminster very kindly. Now, please don't forget Tools with a Mission. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>